came through and, and uh, was asking, what, 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 what are you doing, where are you going? He said, for meditation. And he became very angry. And it's a meditation, that's the last thing you want to do. As soon as you meditate you go crazy. Uh, depending upon who's teaching and what's the style that each community or group, they have a different understanding. And in Sufism the spiritual arm of Islam comes from a prophetic understanding of what they call tafakkur, contemplation that to stop and to contemplate. And what was sent down for us as a system in which to contemplate, one is that we never contemplate in silence. Silence is a tremendous danger. As soon as somebody stops and silences everything, what we believe is that there's a waswas, a whispering one. Whether you call it the negative energy, we call it the, the alter ego, it's something that wants to talk to you. It wants your ear, it wants your attention. So there's a conflict between good inspiration and bad inspiration. As soon as we silence ourselves to absolute nothing as if opening a microphone for that bad energy. Because we sit, become silent and then he says, oh my gosh it's fantastic, there's a speaker now just waiting for me to talk, an open mic. And all he does then begin to talk, 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 talk. And then over analyzing, overthinking every single thing in life, most of which doesn't need to be analyzed and overthought. We don't meditate in silence for that reason. We don't try to take a problem and say, why? Who cares why? It's not important why. Means we're not trying to micro-analyze and break down every single issue in our life and the danger of silence is that. As soon as they have a difficulty at work they go into silence and trying to find a state of peacefulness. And all you have then is a whispering whisperer who just whisper, whisper, whisper every type of difficulty. So no doubt that man got upset. I could imagine it drive many people crazy if you sit there and just listening to all your whisperings all day long. What these awliyaullah brought from the prophetic tradition of contemplation for us in a busy life, in a busy time was to meditate with sound. There has to be a sound that's playing that will counter that whispering. So that I'm not trying to contemplate and hear that voice but I want to have a set of understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish. The first tool is then sound. That I'm going to play a sound that brings a sense of love within my heart, a sense of ease and spirituality. That I want to feel like I'm in a Divine Presence and an ocean of light. Whatever the person has of an understanding that I'm asking to go into an ocean of light my Lord. I'm asking that just difficulties to be taken from me but Your grace and Your light and Your blessings to be dressed upon me. And we see ourselves in that ocean in six directions, a light in front of us, a light to the right of us, to the left of us behind us, above us and below us in six directions we are supported by the Divinely Presence. In any one of those directions a deficit creates a dis-ease in our existence. As soon as I understand that I want to go into an ocean of light and I want to contemplate into that ocean of light then it's important to play the sound. The sound that brings that sense of relaxation that sense of, I'm in this garden of bliss and I'm enjoying. That's why when people walk through the door of a Sufi meditation, they say, oh my God, what's so loud? What are you guys all playing? What's all these sounds that are going on? Thinking we were going to be very quiet, not a drop of a pin. No, that wasn't the understanding. That wasn't the way to reach towards this reality that they're sharing in these communities and wherever they go. What they want to achieve is an inner reality 
They want to teach us the struggle on how to achieve that inner reality and it doesn't come through silence for nothing in this world is silent. They teach you through a state of agitation and aggravation that to train yourself on how to connect your heart while everything is busy, not while everything is closed down, that's too easy. And we are never in a situation like that. So they show like these planes when these pilots are going to get their advanced license, they, they're trained on how to refuel in mid-air. What's the big deal of fueling on the ground? Somebody come put the hose in and put the gas in. So that's not a pilot. The pilot's guy who's doing it at 20,000 feet in the air and he's trying to catch the hose with the gas. So it means our life is about how to learn how to contemplate through busy circumstances in life. How to be able to understand how to shut down that with this advent of technology you can put headphones. And as soon as you put the headphones and listen to the sound that's important for you and then take yourself to a place of peace while the whole world is in turbulence around you. You know there's a peace in the center of the storm and that's a peace that you have to make. It's not going to come to you. You know, peace is not something you just say, I want peace and here it comes. Peace is something we have to struggle for. I think the call is an oxymoron. Words don't match. You actually have to struggle for your sanity and for your peace. Not going to come to anyone. By the design of this world is made and designed to make everything confusing and everything upside down. So. The struggle is to find my peace, is salam. What is Islam? It's taslim and submitting. All of that reality, that's how they teach in terms of energy. That's all the prophets brought the same reality. That you have to connect with the divine core within. How to silence the busy world that's all around us and bring that light that nourishing light that was in the Divine Heart, like a little candle God has given a light into the heart of all His creation. Now how to nourish and nurture that light. How to take that light and pretend like when they teach you camping, they give you a little flame that you spark. When they teach you that you have to, you really have to take care of it otherwise the wind will blow it out. Our life is like that, all our bad actions and bad character is trying to blow out the flame of light, the flame of faith within the heart. So when they teach to meditate, the first concept of meditation is that I have to have a sound. I have to set my, my whole environment for my peace. My peace, this sound is a reality on my ears. When I hear that sound, my ears they're like opening and my soul's energy is trying to absorb. So it means that the sound that you find to be peaceful, why is it peaceful? Because the reality of energy is that it actually is hitting the soul. And the soul is a light, is an energy. Everything now can be understood as an energy. Your form is a form, your form breaks down to its atoms which is a light, the light breaks down to a sound and an energy. So then this energy that I find peaceful, why is it peaceful? Because it hits my ear and enters into my soul, into my heart and it gives me a sense of tranquility and peacefulness. If I can understand that reality then I sit and I put the sound and I set the environment that I'm asking for ocean of light. I'm not asking to analyze my problems and get answers for all my problems. I'm asking just to enter into your oceans of light. Don't want to see anything but I want to feel the light and I want to feel the energy my Lord. And as soon as they begin to play the sounds and play the sounds that are important for their heart, it begins to enter and its vibration enters into the ear and begins to move the heart. 
move the heart and if they're familiar with the words, if they're familiar with Qur'an, if they're familiar with the durood, if they're familiar with the classical sound, whatever it is the servant wants to play, they feel the familiarity of it and that sound, that's why Prophet's nation was, Samina wa atan. We hear and we obey. Means the first reality is the ears. If the ears can't submit, the rest of the donkey is not going anywhere. So they're teaching that the most important block is upon the ears. How am I going to tame my ears to find a sense of peace? Only through that sense of peace I should find a sense of security in the midst of all this storm and chaos because people become very anxious. And they're anxious because the coordinates are not reaching into their heart. When the coordinates are not reaching into your heart, as if you're driving through a tremendous storm, you have no GPS, you have no headlights on, of course you're scared to death. You feel like at any moment you're going to hit another car or go over the cliff. So the whole purpose of contemplation was to illuminate the inner reality. As soon as I sit for five, six minutes a day, you know even in medicine now it's accepted. And they keep trying to sell a, a package at Costco for hypertension, to reduce your hypertension based on sound. They understood that if you put headphones, you listen to a certain sound, then they tell you, breathe according to the rhythm of that classical music or that beat. Why? To control your breathing. Calm yourself down, listen to this sound, let the vibration of that sound and begin to pace your breath. And that sound trains the individual on how to breathe, how to relax, how to meditate. More powerful than hypertension is how to bring this illumination into the heart. That as soon as I begin to meditate and see myself in a world of light, I'm not asking for all the problems, why are they there and give me a solution for everything. I'm asking my Lord, please just send your light and your energy. And then the sound that you play begins to enter into the ear and it's loud enough so you don't hear whispering. And as if you're lost within the sound, not just it's coming very low sound to you and you can still hear the whispering. But you're lost in the sound as if your soul is going into the sound. You're moving into the sound, you're feeling the vibration of what's being recited. Imagine with the duru, the salawats and Qur'an how they meditate. That their soul enters into the sound and into the vibration of what's being recited. And they learn at the level of their soul, not at the level of their aqal, at their mind. Means when you begin to open the world of light, they learn and all knowledge is conveyed through light. The most powerful encrypted reality is through light. They don't sit with the shaykh and say, here's this secret, okay, thank you. Or here's this other secret, oh, okay, thank you. And we were not trained with our head in the presence of the teachers, but they taught us connect your heart. As soon as you mastered in connecting your heart and meditating and contemplating breathing, feeling this ocean of light, entering into the associations of the Divine Lovers. Because again the concept goes a little stronger and higher. That when you try to meditate on your own, you're bombarded by negative energies. And as you're trying to sit and to make a connection, to, to get a sense of peace, even you play the sound, at first there's a lot of negativity continuously coming to the heart, get up, get up, you have to do. Even he can't talk through the ear but he put through the subconscious, you have things to do, you have an email to make, you have lunch to eat. Everything so that you don't sit to make the, the connection with the world of light, to bring out the reality that's in the heart that wants to be brought out. So not only learning how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to to close everything off, see myself in this world of light, play these salawats that are coming strong into my ear, these beautiful sounds that come into my ears and to feel myself lost in that breathing and that energy and just five, six minutes if the person's a beginner that my Lord just let me to breathe in that energy and to purge out all my negativity, breathe. 
and purge out. Breathe and send everything bad out, you are developing the light of the soul and that becomes the food of the soul. There's a food for the body and there's a food for the soul. You can feed your body as much as you want but it's not giving anything to the soul. The soul is an energy and it, and it requires an energy as its sustenance because as soon as you breathe there's a tremendous energy begins to come. And you sit a little bit more and be consistent, consistent, consistent because God wants consistency. Nothing to be given like a drive through in five seconds I did it tomorrow this week, it didn't work I'm gonna quit. But the Divine wants us to keep trying, keep trying. Just a short time every day just breathing, breathing, feeling that light, asking for that energy to come and then you begin to feel the energy in your breath. You begin to feel the energy that's coming. You begin to feel the light that's coming into the soul and you're illuminating now that reality. That little flame as if you're, you're nourishing it and it's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. As that light becomes stronger the anxiety goes down and the vision begins to increase. Because when they illuminate their heart there's an etern internal light, not an external light, an internal light within their heart through the darkness and confusion of whatever's happening in the world that through the inner reality of their heart they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. They're understanding their coordinates. The information is coming to them exactly what's happening. There's nothing to fear, there's nothing to worry about. Because illuminated is a light that comes to take away all fear and doubt and that's why Allah described, My awliyaullah, they have neither fear nor grief. They don't fear and they don't grieve to the extent you understand and we understand. Their grief is regret of what they could have done better. But there's no fear because Allah is sending, Divine is sending lights into the heart. Sending coordinates into the heart, sending the encryption of all realities into their heart and that nourishes their reality. As a result the anxiety drops, the sadness drops, depression drops, the lights come into the heart and make everything to be illuminated. Then they be given when there's more and more and more light coming, the abundance of light begins to give them wisdom. Not knowledge is like a school professor because they were taught by the world of light through an encrypted light and they found now that the highest form of encryption is light. So fiber optics and all, everything that they're teaching to the world of light was that reality. I mean what Allah, what God can put into light and that light send into your heart are volumes beyond understanding of knowledges from the beginning to the end of creation. But how much can you read to get a knowledge? How many books can you possibly read? People who achieve through that way they have like walls of books and they're very happy that they say I read all of these books. But one hour of real contemplation what the Divine can throw of light into your heart it'd be 10,000 walls of that reality. The level of what can come through that world of light is of no, no way to understand. So then when we understood the contemplation, I'm going to contemplate, I'm going to contemplate, then they begin to understood, but Shaykh there's a lot of negativity. I'm like trying to connect in the middle of a storm and say, yeah that's right. As soon as you understood that you haven't the power to uplift yourself, then you seek out the associations of Divine Light because they're like a hot spot. When you find that your signal is not strong enough, maybe your contract wasn't good enough and you can't get your signal to come to your device, it doesn't come cheap and it doesn't come easy. There's a signal through the imaginal world where people think they're connecting but their brain is only connecting. And they feel tingling in their head. This is not the energy that we're talking. We're talking about an energy that comes into the soul and into the heart. Not the tingling of head. That's a different frequency that they could be picking up just from the air. 
So then they begin to teach that if I want to reach that reality, why I seek out these masters of reality? Because their associations are like a hot spot. They're a hot spot for the entire earth if understood. And they can be centralized by their location. As soon as they turn on their receiver, as soon as they turn on their heart, everybody can log on. Everybody will log on. Because in the midst of their haqq, when Allah says, for verily the truth has come and the truth destroys falsehood. Means the truth and falsehood, they don't enter the same environment. And falsehood by its nature is perishing. So when the truth and these lights of realities come, there's no negativity that is going to sit in that presence because it's going to get burned. So it begins to push away all the negativity of people so they enter into a real hot spot. And as soon as they sit into that hot spot, they're trained on how to meditate and contemplate. The same way that I want to be in your oceans of light. Send me from these energies, from these lovers who are sincere and they're praising the way they want to praise for their love, I want to catch from that energy. I don't have to change their praise for something that I want. But I want to catch the energy. When you go to see the birds, you don't correct the bird and say, why are you singing like this? You find the bird that you like to hear. Some people like to hear the nightingales. All these different ways of reciting. When these birds recite, people find tremendous pleasure. They sit on a bench and they're, they're so mesmerized by the beautiful chirping of the birds. Why? Because they understood what the bird was saying? No, but they sensed its love. They sensed the love for the Divinely Presence because a bird is a creature for us to understand that has such an immense love for God that he can fly. Not a donkey and not a giraffe has that. A bird that its love makes it to fly. Never even thinking that God's not going to support it. As a result of its immense love, people find immense pleasure in just listening to them. You know, like an orchestra and all the birds singing different songs. And each bird has a different reality. Mawlana Shaykh taught that the bird and the bird of dove, the peace, the peace bird, the dove, the white dove, shkoroni, it's that is actually telling us to praise the Divine. And that if you remember me, I will remember you in a higher association. So what God has given as a praising to all of these creatures? If we only had spiritual ears to hear what type of praisings they're doing. But the point being is that we come to the circles of love. That in their praising, they're producing energies and they're producing an immense love. That love is what pushes away negativity so that we can have a hot spot for a few hours. As soon as we sit in that hot spot, we're coming to build our light, build the connection, make that connection, make that light to enter into the heart, to fill me with that light, fill me with that energy, fill me with that reality and then going home for the next few days and keep trying and keep trying to meditate and you can, until you can build that connection, build that reality and build that flame within the heart that each time you meet the guide, your heart is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger until you begin to feel them, sense them at all times. Because you locked onto the channel, you feel their signal reaching to you at all times. And that's from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. Allah is saying that obey God, obey the messengers and obey those in authority. What obey? Through the spiritual connections and the lights that they're sending through their heart like a Wi-Fi. As soon as we connect and we connect and we connect, the connection becomes so strong it's a live stream at all moments. This energy is flowing at all moments. And this is what they intended for us when we arrived upon this earth was to build the spiritual reality but people become lost in only the material aspect of life and as a result they become depressed and anxious and sick from every type of difficulty. When we see all these different things that are opening upon the earth, 
I can imagine many people will be stressed, many people will be in difficulty. What to do? This one has the flu, this one has the cold, this one blowing their nose. Oh my God, let me put a mask upon my face. All this panicking for what? If you sit and you meditate and the light is coming, the energy is coming into the heart, there's nothing to fear because the coordinates come to your heart and that light coming to your heart. That nothing can come to you that's not written for you and nothing can help you that's not written for you. We pray that God Almighty dress us, bless us, Allah dress us and bless us with more and more understanding. As much as we empty our cup that Ya Rabbi fill our cup with your lights and with your blessing inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surah al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.